And then Jesus says there in, in verse 48, like, unless you see signs and wonders, uh, you will not believe. And so it seems kind of like a contradiction here. So what, 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 are, what are we trying to get out of these passages? Hey, welcome to Whitefields Community Church Sermon Extra. Great to have you with us once again this week. I'm here with Pastor Nick Cady, who is the pastor of Whitefields Community Church here in Longmont, Colorado. And we are in our series. Um, I forgot what the series title was. Uh, the series is called So That You May Believe. So That You May Believe. Yeah, we're looking at the seven signs that are in, in John. If you remember, we came out of, before this series, we were doing the seven I am statements. And now we stayed in the Gospel of, Song, uh, of, Gospel of John. Now we're looking at the seven, seven signs. And the one we were looking at was out of John chapter four, where the nobleman's uh, son is healed by Jesus. And uh, we'll, uh, if you missed any of that, uh, any of that story or any of that message, uh, whitefieldschurch.com. You can find it there at our website. Or if you're into YouTube or Facebook or any of the streaming platforms that uh, you enjoy, uh, you can find it over there. And if you would, you know, you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening to it on a podcast, you know, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, leave us a review, uh, leave us a comment, you know, any kind of engagement like that. Not only do we want to hear from you and, you know, know that we're kind of, you know, making some inroads here but also it, it helps in in uh raising us in the in the in the algorithm of the cyberverse and uh you know if people are asking these questions about god and about jesus and about signs and all these kind of things uh, that we can provide them with christ-centered and uh gospel-centered answers to their questions but so we're here we find ourselves this is a third of our our series, and we're in John chapter four. It's number two. It's number two? Man, I'm just way off today. <laughs> so number two. And actually it starts out, it tells us there, Jesus comes back to the place where he actually turned the water into wine. Yeah. So that kind of set me up right there. But we wanted to start today just kind of looking at this. It seems like Jesus is kind of talking out of both sides of his mouth. You know, when he, you know, John's writing the whole book of, of John basically about these signs and saying that these signs are, are so that you believe. And then Jesus says there in, in verse 48, it's like, unless you see signs and wonders, uh, you will not believe. And so it seems kind of like a contradiction here. So what, 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 are, what are we trying to get out of these passages? Yeah. So yeah, Jesus is scolding the Galileans because last time he preached to them, they tried to kill him. And this time, uh, now they're welcoming him back. Their attitude towards him has changed, and it's only because they want to see signs and wonders. Um, now, that, that does sound like a contradiction, right? Like if the whole premise of the book is, hey, look at these signs that Jesus performed. This is why you should believe in him, which is literally what John says in chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. And then Jesus kind of scolds people for only believing if they see signs. How do these add up? Well, the, the way it adds up is this. You have to understand that the signs are not to be focused on themselves, right? When we start focusing on a sign itself, rather than the thing which the sign points to, then we've missed the point completely. So if our focus is only on miracles and wonders, that's not the point. We should be asking, what does this miracle reveal to us? What does it point to? Because Jesus didn't do miracles. That's a, another great question to ask. Why did Jesus do miracles? Was it just because he could? Was it because they're cool and they show his power and they help people? Um, no, what John's telling us is there's a bigger reason. They actually, there's a purpose behind them. They serve uh, to do something. And what they serve to do is they serve to point us to who Jesus is, what he came to do, and how you can receive it. So um, it's a really interesting thing that goes throughout the Gospel of John. And this is what's so, so compelling about the Gospel of John is that there are all these layers of complexity that John built into his Gospel, which is really interesting because, you know, uh, linguistically, John's Gospel is obviously written in Greek by somebody for whom Greek was not their their primary language, right? John was a Jewish person, probably spoke Aramaic and Hebrew, but like many people at the time, would have spoken Greek as a kind of trade language. It would have been the lingua franca of the day. It'd be kind of like if you went to Europe and many people can speak English, but they speak it on varying levels of proficiency. Well, that, that's kind of how it was with Greek in that time. So John writes in Greek, 
and his Greek is correct, but you know, it's, it's simple. And so, um, and yet in, in the simplicity of the language, John adds these layers of complexity, right? Seven signs, seven I am statements, five times Jesus goes to Jerusalem. He's always going back and forth to Jerusalem. And there's these rep- repeated actions and repeated things that go throughout the book that all point to something. Well, one of the things that's really interesting to note is that in almost every miracle with at least one really big exception, right? Which is chapter nine, when he heals a man who was born blind, but in almost every other miracle, Jesus does these things remotely, right? Meaning like he turns water into wine, but he doesn't touch the wine. He tells other people what to do. And as they obey his commands, a miracle takes place here. Uh, you know, Jesus does a miracle just by speaking a word. In the next miracle in chapter five, Jesus is going to just speak the word and a man is healed. But again, he never doesn't touch the man. And this is a really interesting thing. Like, of course, John says, Jesus did a lot of miracles that are not mentioned in this book, but he's chosen to highlight these for a reason. One of the reasons he's highlighting them is because they show us something about Jesus that is important for us today to know. And it would have been a important for the people at the time that he wrote to know that as well. Remember, John's gospel was the last of the gospels to be written. It was written chronologically at a time when most people who had become Christians had never seen Jesus in the flesh. And so John's writing to them, telling them something about Jesus that applies to them in that moment. And one of the things he's telling them is Jesus, even though he's not here physically, he is able, fully able to do his work. And one of the most important passages for this that I didn't mention on Sunday is John 14 and John 16. And that is the farewell discourse. If you remember the last supper, they're sitting there eating. And then um, Jesus is speaking to them about how he's going to go away. And of course they're heartbroken. They're, it's, they're just, you know, torn up about this information. But Jesus says, trust me, it's actually better for you if I go away, because if I go away, I will send you the helper, the uh, Holy Spirit. And he says that I will continue my work through the Holy Spirit in an actually more effective way. And so each of these miracles is also emphasizing, okay, see, look, even when he was here on earth, Jesus was doing things remotely. And now that he is at the right hand of the Father, he continues to work remotely by his spirit and through the power he has as God, right? Just as God created with his voice, Jesus is able to uh, speak and things happen because he's God. And so, uh, you know, it all culminates this whole idea of Jesus is still able to work now, even though he's not physically present. It culminates with um, this statement in John 20, where right before his kind of big reveal thesis statement, these things are written so that you may believe, he says to Thomas, you have believed because you've seen, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Because, of course, he wants to highlight that statement because that is the situation that most people at the time reading and us today are in. And so the emphasis is believing in Jesus based on his word, not based on simply seeing things. Um, Because the fact is, look, if if everybody said, I will only believe in Jesus if I see him, well, for most of history, that has not been possible, right? And so we have to believe based on testimony, based on testimony of scripture, based on testimony of people who were there. And so that's why John highlights the different reaction of the Samaritans who in verse 41, they believed because of Jesus' word. And then this man who believes Jesus, even though he can't see if his son is healed, he just chooses to believe him based on his word. And that's the big emphasis for us today. Yeah, no, and that's that's great since we're 2,000 years plus removed from that. Yeah, we do feel it fall into that category. We don't, we're not walking around the streets of Jerusalem with, with the Messiah, Jesus himself. And it's good. And, you know, in the book of John, as you read through, it seems like Jesus is always preparing them. Hey, I'm going away. I'm going away. And then it kind of is like, you know, finally, I think that one of them says like, like, Lord, how do we know where you're going? <laughs> you know, the, the, the uh, one I am statement where he says, I'm the way, the truth and life. And yeah. like, you know, it's like, well, if you see me, you've seen the father and, you know, but they seem to kind of push that off, you know, and it's not until 
pretty much the act when when Jesus is taken when he when he ascends when they finally like you know on the road to Emmaus when they the light bulb goes on but but it's a great you know these signs were not only for them but for us for us much much later and I yeah I remember you know working many years ago I had I had a colleague and I him and I would discuss religion all the time and he says well if an angel of the Lord appeared to me then I would believe, mm -hmm. you know, and I've, I've heard that from so many people, but, you know, as we've looked here, this is, that is ex almost the exact opposite of, of what Jesus is saying is don't, you know, even though he's doing the signs, the signs are pointing to him, mm -hmm. you know, and not necessarily the, 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 the most important thing. Yeah. And one thing I always point out to people is everybody says, Hey, if I could see a miracle or something like that, I would believe. And what I always say is, um, I'm not sure you would because, uh, let's not forget that Jesus fed 5,000 people. That is one of the, um, upcoming passages we're going to look at in the gospel of John. It's recorded in all of the gospels. And in one gospel, we're actually told that Jesus not only fed 5,000, but on a separate occasion, he fed 4,000. Now, a lot of people have pointed this out. That's only listing the men. It's not listing the number of women and children. So you could at least double it, right? So uh, 5,000 becomes 10,000, 4,000 becomes 8,000. So you're looking at nearly 20,000 people that Jesus fed miraculously. And uh, I always like to point this out that, and yet 20,000 people he feeds miraculously. So many people see the miracles he did at Passover in Jerusalem, like it mentioned in chapter two, verse 23. And yet on the day of Pentecost, it says that there were 120 committed followers of Jesus in the upper room. Where are those 20,000 people, right? Mm -hmm. If all it took was seeing a miracle, then there should have been a lot more people following Jesus. And yet we know that faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. It's the word of God, Hebrews chapter four says, that is living and active, able to cut to the core of our being, right? Able to cut to the to core of our motives, all those things. And so um, that's why our focus as a church is not on signs and wonders. Our focus as a church is to focus on the things which the signs pointed to and we focus on the word of God because as we're told repeatedly throughout scripture and people see miracles and yet they're apparently they're able to see miracles and then just walk away and not be transformed. It's the word of God that has the power to transform. Yeah, that reminds me of that scripture. I think it's John chapter six where Jesus is speaking to the crowds and it says, they they found what he said was very hard and said Jesus then turned to his disciples said, are you going to leave me as well and and Peter said like Lord to whom you know shall we go you know yeah, you alone have the words, words of life of, you have the words yeah. of eternal life and I mean that that should be that's what the the signs and wonders are pointing to is that when it's all said and done you know who do we have left well we have Jesus the one. The yeah. eternal one, the, the the way, the truth, and the life, and th and that's the lesson. Because if we make an idol of a sign and a wonder, you know, what does that going to bring us? But nothing. You know, we we want to go to the source of life and to the thing that the signs point to. And um, and because if we're raised from the dead, we're still going to die again. We want to mm -hmm. be raised eternally, our spiritual. You want to be new creations in Christ, and so that and that's a great lesson lesson to learn that um, you know. We're not focused on signs and wonders, though we still believe today that God is healing mm -hmm. people and God is still speaking and he's doing miraculous works amongst uh, amongst the, those that call him Lord. And, uh, and you know, that's not something we want, to, we want to discount, but it's not what we search for. We search for the living Christ and the one who has eternal life. And so, you know... We, uh, you know, those those things are resonating with you. You know, search out the Lord. Don't search out the signs. And uh, you know, continue with us in the series. We've got a lot more of these signs to come to as as we go through through the the Gospel of John. And if you've missed any of them, uh, stay with us. Whitefieldschurch.com. You can find us there. Or Sunday mornings, you can catch us online, YouTube, and Facebook. And we look forward to seeing you next week. God bless. <laughs>